Are you ready for the most controversial video that I am letting out so far? Uh, please don't kill me. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming on my channel, Your Canadian Blind Girl. Stay tuned to see what I have for you today. Okay, so today's video, I am proposing the question, can blind people be too independent? Now, hear me out. Our biggest struggle in the blind community is proving to people that we can do some things ourselves. Okay, so I have often told people, if you put me in a house, and I was to be in that house for even up to a year, I would not die. I would not die. I know how to cook. I know how to clean. I know how to clean myself. Um, you know, I know all of those things. However, my independence kind of comes to a halt when it comes to the outside world. Because as me as a blind person, I need work. And that's reliant on other people being understanding of my condition and understanding that I am independent. I need other people to drive me. So for groceries, for doctor's appointments, for going to my church, for going to um, appointments and engagements and meetings, I need a ride. Um, any, like anything that I have to go outside of my house is independent in the sense that I have to work with other people. So when I come with this phrase, can blind people be too independent, that's going to be controversial because people are going to be like, what are you doing? This is what I mean. I don't know how many times I hear other blind people be totally ignorant to somebody that doesn't understand. Every time I am out, I am reminded of human nature. So some people, when they see me as a blind person, some people decide to ignore me. I'm invisible. They ignore me, they go around me, and that's fine. I can get along with those people. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's fine. Pretend I don't exist. I don't care. That doesn't bother me. Or there's people who they, they think I cannot do anything and they're just like, oh no, like what, what are you going to do? And like they'll, they'll watch and they'll stare and like, they, they, you know, they don't, they don't get involved. They're just like, you know, like when my family is out, they can tell that these people are bothered by me because they, they want to help me. Um, but again, they don't get involved. I don't have a problem with those people either. <laughs> and then there are people who, again, they think I am incapable and that I need help. And they get involved and they get too involved to the effect that, you know, sometimes they'll try and take things from me. So if I'm carrying something and I've actually had this happen, I was in a Costco cafeteria and someone I had in my hand, I had a cone and I was holding it with my thumb and forefinger and then I had a piece of pizza wrapped up in a plastic plate and being held in the same hand because my other hand had my cane. So in the same hand I was holding a cone with my forefinger and my thumb and the, slice, the pizza slice in the paper plate in the other fingers. I was managing quite well. Nothing was slipping, nothing was falling. I was not moving awkwardly and this person came up to me and started taking it out of my hand and saying, oh here, let me help you, let me help you, let me help you. Some blind people in that instant, now yes, I did get angry. I was very angry that this person, one, you're touching my food. You're touching my food. Okay, I don't care if there's a napkin on the ice cream cone and you're technically not touching the cone. You are touching my food. That is disgusting. Do not touch my food. You're a stranger. I do not know you. Don't touch me. Don't touch my food. Okay. So yes, I was angry on the inside, but I took it as a teaching opportunity because I may be the only blind person that this person needs. And so I said, no, no, I go, actually, I am fine. Um, I know where I am in the cafeteria by the sounds. I go, I know I'm in front of where I order at the counter because I can hear the, the cooking sounds and the cash register people talking. And I said, I know where the tables are because I go, I can hear people in the table section. It's a different sound than what's going on at the cash registers, which is all in the same area. I can hear that. And I was trying to explain to her and teach her, you know, and stuff like that. And so I was getting to the point where I was gonna say, please give me back my food and don't take things from me. And so I was gonna be a little bit firmer. I wasn't gonna lash out. I have heard other blind people totally, I don't need your help. I can do it myself. Like, la 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 la. 
you know what? This lady probably would have treated an elderly lady in the exact same way. And to me, if they're treating me the same way they would treat an elderly lady, it is out of manners and respect and kindness. So if someone goes and goes, oh, here, I can open the door for you, and I, I can do it myself, that is being rude. That is being rude. If you were a four-year-old sighted child who responded the exact same way, that would be being rude. Okay, so this is very, very, very important. Please get this. There is a difference between people helping you and enabling you. All right, they're not trying to enable you. They want to help you. And if it's not someone you're going to be around all the time to properly teach them, no, no, this is how you do it. Um, like, there are times when I am out and, you know what, people, they panic, they don't know how to help me. They want to help me get to a chair or get to a door or get to where I'm trying to go. And they will, they will, they will grab my arm. And part of that is my fault because when they say, can I help you? And I say, yes, can I hang on to your elbow? You need to be the instigator of how to help you. You don't go, don't grab me. You don't say that. You don't say that. Okay? You say that if it's a hostile situation and someone is grabbing at you. Because if you're constantly saying that when you're out with your friends and family, they get used to you saying that phrase. And so when you're in a situation where it's important that other people are hearing you say, don't grab me, you know, the, you want people to hear that phrase. So if you're out and you're, you know, maybe you're out with your family at a grocery store, and there's a hostile situation where someone grabs you and not in a way to help you, you need to be able to call out and say, don't grab me. But if you're saying that all the time, I love the trucks. But if you're saying all that time, anyone who's with you all the time, they get used to you saying that phrase. So when someone asks you, can I help you, blah, 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 to wherever, say, yes, can I hang on to your elbow? See how you're in control of the situation and you're not being rude. And they go, oh, okay. And as you're walking, then explain to them why you hang onto their elbow instead of them just grabbing you. And, and even say, I even say, whenever someone helps me in a positive way, I say, wow, I go, thank you so much. I go, would you believe that most people don't know that that's the way to help me and they do this instead? And that way you're lifting them up and it's a positive experience. Because if you're negative, they now have the mindset that blind people are rude and miserable and they never want to help or be around a blind person. And there are times when I'm out that as independent as I am, I've been told multiple times by people who work with the blind, I'm one of the most in independent individuals that they've ever met. And that's a good thing, that's a good thing. But I need to make sure that I never move. So I know this is a controversial subject and I'm, I'm asking my blind followers, please do not be angry with me teaching this lesson. Like I said, I know people who have said to me, because of bad experiences with other blind people, that they assumed we were very mean and miserable. And that's horrible. That is horrible. And every experience, now I, I do realize you get tired of people doing the wrong thing or saying the wrong thing. I realize that. I'm just like you. I, you know, I have the same emotions you have. I get annoyed, I get tired, I get tired of being the one that's constantly have to teach and say, please don't do that. <laughs> you know, like, um, the same with like, people like to carry my stuff. Well, if you grab my bag and it's it's gone from where I put it, I assume someone took my bag and it's not a friend. <laughs> you know, and so there's different things that I have learned how to cope with and hopefully I can do more videos where I've taught, where I teach how I've learned to think outside the box. I was, okay, so, I was at a place where I was at a cash register and I was paying for something and there was a person with me. Anyways, I was doing the ordering, I was doing the talking, um, because people with me, I've, I, like, I live with a family that jokes around a ton and I've had to tell them, when I'm working with someone you can't be t telling them jokes because I go, I need them to be paying attention. I go, they're distracted enough when a blind person is at their till. If you're cracking jokes with them, their mind is, is not there, so you have to be quiet. And so I was at this cash register, I did all the talking, I handed them the money, I was the one that was being engaging, and when they handed the money back, I had put my hand out, they did not put it in my hand. I heard the change being passed over to the person that was working. Who so they probably they, they wouldn't have put their hand out first if I had my hand out. I had my hand out and so that person didn't know to put it in my hand 
and went to give it to them. And so I was talking to someone who works with the blind, and they go, that person is so rude, that is so ignorant, acting like you're invisible. How rude of them. And so I started thinking, yeah, that person is really rude. How rude of them. You know, and I started developing this attitude. And so my mom said to me later on, she goes, wait, wait. They may never have been around a blind person before. And they go, they may have been scared of doing it the wrong way or scared that your hand wasn't going to catch all the change. Or they were scared that maybe if they touched you, they'd scare you. And I thought, wow, that is such a totally different insight. And I, I do need to do videos with my mom because my mom is that person that's on the other side who has sight, who has that ability to look at a situation and go, hmm, this is not the way it's coming across. But then I got thinking, this person who works with the blind, they encouraged me to see something the wrong way. That person, from when I was having a conversation, they were not rude to me in one way whatsoever. They were not rude when I handed them the money. So why do I think that they were rude when they were handing the money back? They weren't being rude. They panicked. They didn't know what to do. And I really blame this. I live in Canada. We do not have enough educational programs that are teaching the general public and stores and companies of how to deal with blind people. I was at a street fair or a festival, I don't know what you call it, and they had booths for all different things and I was really tired of being housebound and I'm going to do another video about that. I was really tired of being housebound and I wanted something to do. I wanted a way to get out that wasn't, and I, I did start horseback riding lessons when, after I went blind and they were amazing. If I could, I would, oh, I would go back to horseback riding if I could. It, it's just, it, it's too expensive. I don't have money for it. And, uh, but it was, it was something that, it was just so liberating for me because I hadn't done it before when I was sighted. And so it was a whole different experience because I didn't know what to expect. And I felt so free and soaring and oh, it was just it was it was the it was the best experience ever. So I love horseback riding. Anyways, uh, so we were at the street festival, we were at the street fair, and we were looking for things to do. And every activity that I talked to, you know, there's curling, there's you know, there was a bunch of different bunch of different activities. And Every single one, they wanted to put me in a group with people who had, uh, they were um, developmentally challenged. So they could not think for themselves, or they had trouble trying to think for themselves. And please understand, I respect those people as much as I would respect anybody else. They are amazing people, and I love them, and I don't want anybody having a stigma against them but I don't belong in that group. And to me, I found that very insulting because I am fine, but I can think for myself. Um, like, you know what I mean? And so there was nothing for people who are blind. There is nothing away from it. Absolutely nothing. There are activities that are two hours away that I could go to but then I have to try and arrange a ride, which we all know how stressful that can be. Um, I have to pay for the gas. So if that activity is, even if that activity is free, it's already gonna cost me at least $40 in gas just to go to that activity. Um, but then if you have to pay for the activity, it's more on top of that. So I really am stuck. And um, so there is not enough education there are not enough programs in my country that is teaching about the blind and what the blind can do. And I'm really hoping that my YouTube channel can change that. I'm really hoping that I can get into motivational speaking. I can get into some way that I can educate the public. I can educate store operators and owners and employers. I'm hoping I can, uh, even our, our Canadian government agencies do not know how to deal with a blind person. When I went in to get my passport, I was the one doing all the talking and they were still turning and talking to my mother. They were still doing that. And, you know, like, and it's frustrating, you get tired of it, but you cannot be rude. If you're rude, you're shutting down future opportunities for learning. And that just, that's really sad. And 
if I ever met somebody, like if I was talking to someone, they go, okay, yeah, here's Anne Grace. I don't know an Anne Grace. I'm using that name as an, as an example. Oh, she goes, well, Anne Grace, she's just, you know, after meeting her, I, I really don't want anything to do with the wine. And I keep hearing this. If I ever met Anne Grace, I'm telling you, I would have words for her and I would probably chew her out and, and tell her how disappointed I am that people were judging me because she left a bad taste in some days. And I understand there is more criticism for people like us because we are watched more than other people. When you're out, you, there could be five other people walking down the sidewalk. Guess who they're going to be staring at? The person with the cane, the person with the guide dog, the person that's different. I get that. And they are watching us more and judging us more than they do other people. Especially for me, I know that I am judged more because I have taken a public platform. But, and I realize you get tired of people's scrutiny. I do too. I get tired of people's unwanted advice, unwanted comments, unwanted opinions. I do. But, I still need to learn to be a human being and how to interact and how to be polite and, and take it. And, um... You know, you don't have to take people's rudeness, but you should never be rude. You should never be rude, ever. So, anyways, um, if you if you need a, a way to vent, you know, you can do YouTube videos where you're snarky. Like I was snarky in one of my videos about cell phones. Um, I was snarky, but I would not have been that way to somebody in in person. Like I said, am I stupid when I was talking about a cell phone? I would not say that to somebody if I was out with a cell phone and they go, you can use a, a cell phone. I wouldn't turn to, go, turn to them and go, am I stupid? I wouldn't say that to them. Even though I may be thinking it, I would not say that to them. So I hope I didn't cause too big of a stir. I hope this was helpful in some way, in some form. And I'm really, really hoping that every person out there who is a VIP or who is blind, that you are making a difference for the better in your family, in your home, in your community, in your town, in your country, because you may be the only blind person that other people meet and you can make such a huge impact that you don't even know. So please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share, because every person who subscribes to my channel and shares, you're helping to raise awareness about blindness and stop the stigma against sight loss. So thank you so much for contributing and helping this channel out. And I would love to get to know you. Leave a comment below a little bit about you. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.